Hi, in this video I'll be showing you a few some of the keyboard shortcuts for CoLab that I found particularly useful. I'll try not to spend too much time going through them because I think it's more useful if you try to experiment with them and try to get used to them in your workflow. So let's get started. Number one is showing the help keyboard shortcuts. So that would be command mh and we can see the default key bindings. We can actually change it to vim if you're a vim user or you're trying to learn vim then this could help you get used to it. So once you enter the code cell you are basically working like Vim, but I am not too familiar with Vim, so I will stick with the default. Another thing you can do is to look at the shortcuts and you can even change them. So you realize that some of them don't have any shortcuts set and I would think that's because there aren't any good shortcuts for these, which I realized while I was trying to set my own shortcuts. So for example, if we look at mount, this is one that I actually set myself, mount drive, which I think it's kind of useful. So to set it, you just click on the space and then you click delete backspace and then you can type your shortcut. Let's say control D and there it is. Once you click save, then this shortcut is active. So if I go here and do control D, you will see it's mounting the drive and I'll say no thanks. And here is, I think this shortcut is pretty useful because you can not only use it to mount your drive, but you can also change it to files and here you can do files to upload as well. So depending if you want to use your drive or you want to use, you want to manually upload your files, that, that's possible as well if you forget the command to do that. But here I'm just going to cancel the upload, delete the cell. All right. Next one is, okay, mount the drive. We have done that. And then how do we interrupt the cell execution? Because maybe you're stuck in a for loop or you for whatever reason you're stuck in a loop so in this case i'm just going to do sleep you can actually just do command m i to interrupt the set execution very quickly so it's similar to doing a control c in terminal or in jupyter notebook the shortcut is actually just i i so but in colab you would usually append the command or the control m number four is about adding cursors and i think this is really really useful when you have a lot of repetitive changes you want to make so Okay, let's look at getting a cursor for every word instance. For example, you want to change the DF. So actually, I can just do Command Shift L. And immediately, we can select all of the DFs. We can maybe change it to something else. And very quickly, we can get a change done. But if you would like a bit more finer control, there's another option, which is to do Command or Control D. And so this will get you the next instance. For example, here we can do command D, we select the first instance and command D again and then we have two cursors, we can change these to um, let's say years and I'm just going to comment out the sleep, uh, interrupt the cell okay and run all right and one last thing you can do if you really like super fine control you can do option or alt click and this will give you the cursor at a specific location that you want so as you can see anywhere that you want is possible another thing i would like to mention is that um, the first three of up to 4.1 those are actually shortcuts that are unique to colab but from here on from 4.2 onwards these are shortcuts that are not just applicable in colab but you can also use them elsewhere in say um, VS Code or you will see examples later that uh, will work in Jupyter Notebook as well. So the way this is, I organize the um, shortcuts so that it's easier to not get confused between the shortcuts that are applicable to Colab and to Jupyter Notebook because it does get a bit confusing at times I find. So next is about moving lines when you have lines that are similar but sort of different for example first of all if you just do option up and down using the arrow keys you can move the lines up and down so let's say you want to reorder your print statements, that's possible. Or if you want to add another print statement that is really similar, you don't want to uh, manually select copy, control C and then um, control V. Actually, what you can do is you can do option shift, option with the shift and then you do the arrow keys. If you go down, then the new line will be inserted below and you can do that as many times as you want. But I'm just going to keep it. Next will be about deleting lines now so command shift k actually works in vs code as well and i think this is very very useful if you just don't want the line just go ahead and command shift k and it's gone just like that and it even works wherever you are inside the line so if you're in the middle of a line somewhere and you do command shift k the whole line is still gone 
you don't have to manually select the line and go and do a backspace or delete. So that's really very convenient and I use that in VS Code as well. Another option, if you want more control, that would be command, delete and so it works in a similar way but it will delete everything before the cursor. So let's say you want to change the variable name, instead of selecting you can actually just do um, command D, command delete sorry, and then retype your variable name. If you want to delete a whole line that's still possible, if you are at the end of the line then you just do command delete, like that. Next will be how to indent lines. Now I know normally people would do uh, tab using the tab button, but sometimes maybe you're in the middle of a line and then you want to you realize that this needs to be indented. In this case, it's not, but just to give an example, if you do your normal tab, then you get just the um, right half that is being um, tabbed. But if you want the whole line to be indented, then actually you can actually just do command square bracket. So the right square bracket to move it to the right and the left square bracket to move it to the left. So I find this really useful in say a for loop. Alright, last but not least, we have how to move from the start to the end of the line very quickly and easily. And this is one that works in almost anywhere that I've seen. But I'm not sure, I don't think it works in Windows Terminal. It works in VS Code, Jupyter Notebook and in my Bash Terminal. So that would just be Control A. I think of it as Control Alpha to go to the start or Control E for the end to go to the start and the end of the line. Now why is this useful? It's useful because if you want to create a new line, right, then you can actually just do Ctrl A and then enter to create a new line. If you want the new line at the end, then you just do Ctrl E and then click enter. And this is even more useful in cases where, where you have a really long line and you don't want to scroll through your, up, your code cell, then you can actually just straight away do Ctrl E, Ctrl A and works in other platforms as well. So that's all I have for this video. That's about eight keyboard shortcuts that you can try to implement in your workflow. And these are just the ones that I found particularly helpful for me. You can go ahead and explore the other options out there. And because you realize some of these, most of these actually aren't shown in the keyboard shortcuts, in the keyboard preferences right here. Yeah, so it does take a bit of um, exploring on your own to find out what works best for you. If you found this useful, do share it with anyone who might as well. And thanks for watching.